guys, it's uh, Mario from Auto Techniques, and I'm here today to explain to you and show you um, the steps into making a perfect flare. Now, uh, first and foremost, um, the tools you'll need is obviously a double flaring toolkit. Um, this one happens to be a Blue Point, uh, a very, very uh, good kit, uh, professional grade, last two years. Um, you're going to need a 3 16 uh, brake line and the fitting for it, or the nut. Um, you're also going to need a file and um, uh, some sort of reamer. Uh, I use, um, from time to time, um, a Precision Phillips. And uh, the diameter of this shaft um, just happens to fit perfect inside a 3 16 uh, line um, and it will uh, help ream the edges uh, after we, we've cut it. Um, this tube cutter here also comes with a ridge reamer um, for the same purpose. Um, we're going to be using both as a demonstration. And um, before we actually get started, um, I'm going to explain to you um, the actual variables. Uh, um, that you will encounter that will prevent you from getting a perfect flare. Um, one of those variables is uh, the actual line. You got to make sure your line is actually straight. Do not cut on a bend. Um, cut on the straightest uh, piece of the line. Even when it's on the car, try to find the straightest piece. Um, the condition of line also matters. Uh, when you're when you're doing it on the car, again, look for the cleanest spot. Um, that's not covered in rust. Like if you're doing brake lines on a car, you're obviously there. It's obviously there for a reason. More than likely, it's rusted out. If you're not gonna, uh, if you're not gonna go from the wheel or the flex line to the master cylinder or to the proportioning valve, um, some techs repair it on the car just as a piece. So they have to make a flare into the line and put a joiner in and a nut on both ends. Find the strongest um, area of the line. Sand it down best you can because um, when you go to make that flare um, if, if um, the condition of the metal isn't as strong then you'll compromise the actual flare and cause a leak so you don't want that um, another thing I want to talk about is how the line is cut um, the only and the best form of cutting a line is with a tube cutter now again this one is a blue point it works exceptionally well, very well made. Um, there's smaller versions. If you're uh, repairing a line on the car, you're going to be using a small one, not a big one like this. But because we're working off the car, the line is off the car. It's nice and easy. We'll just use a, um, the big one here. Um, um, some pointers and uh, an explanation how this actual device works. Um, it actually it doesn't remove any metal when it cuts. It's scoring the metal. Um, and what you do, this dial um, moves uh, the blade closer to the tube after it scores it. So the depth of the blade is penetrating inside the metal, causing a score. And you're going to be spinning this around the tube. So the entire diameter of the tube is getting scored over and over again until it, it, um, it cuts right through the wall of the tube, and then thus uh, uh, making a, a, a perfect cut. Uh, you do not want to use a hacksaw blade or a grinder. Um, it's too jagged of a cut, and when you go to flare it, it's again unsuccessful. Um, so, when you're cutting a, t a brake line, fuel line, always use a tube cutter. Now, with that being said, the blade on this tube cutter, um, it's 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 cut into a point, and if I draw this out in a, into a larger area, um, it's going to look like that. So after it's scored and cuts through, it leaves a bevel or a chamfer on the tube once it's cut. Now, that chamfer you need to get rid of. And the tube has to be perfectly straight in order to get a perfect flare. So, this is how it's going to look after you cut it. Then this is how it's going to look after we file that chamfer down and we ream the inside of the tube. It's going to be nice and square, and then we can go on and perform a, uh, a flare on the end. So, 
without further ado, um, get our line. I have already pre-marked the line uh, on its, uh, where I think is a pretty straight piece. Like so, a little bit of tension on the dial. Turn it around and around. You'll feel the, the cutter get loose. Just a little bit more tension on the dial. Goes over and over. Again, if you do this on the car, you gotta be very careful not to disturb the rest of the line. Um, you'll be using a smaller cutter. And they have ratcheting type of tube cutters, which makes it very easy for you. It's a wise investment. Just taking our time here, not too much tension. We're almost done. And once this breaks, it's going to drop the nut. Like so. And that is the tube. Once it's cut, save your nut. Set that down for a second. I'm going to take my Phillips screwdriver. I'm sure texts are wondering why I do this. But whatever works. So, file, try to keep the file as square to the line as possible, with a nice flat end here. Again, we're going for a perfect flare. Not sell for anything less. Okay, use our ridge ring wherever you want. Again, you do not have to put tension on this, let the tool do the work, like so. Same with the file, let the tool do the work. square to me. Okay, so we're ready to uh, start flaring. Before we flare, always put the tube back, or the nut, back inside the tube. We're working with a 3 16 line, so it goes into a 3 16 hole. Straightforward. Now, here's another variable when making a perfect flare. I'm just going to lightly snug that down. Is the amount of tube that's exposed from this clamp. You want the same tube exposed as the width of this bit, the 3 16 bit. And uh, same thing goes if you use a 5 16 quarter inch, 3 8 half inch. Um, there is a first step, which is the largest step. That's the amount of tube you want exposed. So we're going to move this tube down a bit. That is perfect. Now we can go ahead and tighten this down. Back. As I'm 
doing this, I'm going to explain to you another variable. Um, the toolkit that you use. Um, there's a lot of techs that keep their tools for a long time, especially when they buy a good kit. Uh, this one only happens to be about three months old. Um, so every working part here is working as, as intended. Um, even the threads are nice and clean, uh, are, are clean and oiled. Um, the cone and the pentel shows no signs of wear. Um, the bit itself on the inside of the bit, that's where the magic happens. Um, it causes a bubble once, once it's pressed in. Um, that wears out over time. Oftentimes um, uh, the shaft breaks and has to be replaced. Um, if you start getting wear on the pentel of this cone, um, you know uh, there's a lot of slop in the cone inside this um, uh, threaded shaft. Um, the flare starts walking off, it doesn't get centered. Um, so that again will prevent you from getting a, a perfect flare. So keep that in mind. Okay, so what we want right now is we want um, the clamp to be square um, with the tube and um, the press here. So what I do is I just turn it down till it's seated, move the bit, take a good look at it, make sure everything's square. Down a bit more. Everything looks square. Make the sign of the cross. Start turning. Now you turn until the bit is seated up against the surface and it can't go no more. So you start turning it the other way. Much easier to do when the line is off the car. Again, as text, we don't always have that privilege. So, after the first stage, we look at the bubble that it's made, and it uh, looks pretty good. So, we're done with this bit. Now, the second stage of this flare. This is where the 45 degree angle comes in. Turn that in until it just seats. Adjust your clamp. Everything's nice and square. Then we're going to turn it. This handle should be right above here when I'm done. Sometimes techs like to go overboard. It's not necessary. You just want a perfect flare. So I'd say half a turn, maybe not even. So, turn it back, take a look at the finished product, shaving, that looks pretty good. You want to take a look at it before you take the clamp off the line. So once you dismantle it and you move the nut up to see if it's lined up, um, once you put the clamp back on and the text try to readjust after it's and everything's and everything's lined up. So everything looks good. I'm gonna undo the wing nut. Then I'm gonna move the nut up. See if it's lined up. And that is a perfect flare. So, that's it guys. If you, uh, you guys enjoyed this video and uh, for more videos to help fellow techs along the way, uh, please subscribe to this channel. I'm Muriel and as always, real techs, real solutions.